Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Bob, happy Friday. Welcome back to our Top 5 Fridays Ski Industry News videos. Bob, welcome back. It's been like three weeks since you've been here. Yeah, vacation, and then I was home with the kids last Friday. And you go to the fair. Went to the fair. That was a big hit. Seemed like we were just saying, seems like yesterday, and here, here we are again. Here we are again on Friday. It's another Friday. Yep. Um, and this was the first Top 5 Friday since we started our 2023 comparison series, so we've had two of those so far. I would certainly venture a guess that if you're watching this video, you're aware that those are up. Um, but if you haven't checked them out, I would encourage you to do so. They're fun to put together, and I think they're the best ever this season. Yeah, and if you like watching two hours of us talking about skis, then yeah. you're in luck. <laughs> I can't even like begin to say how physically tiring it is filming those things. No, and and like yeah, everything from just like getting parched to yeah, like standing. My back starts hurting. <laughs> Anyways, no, they're really fun to yeah. put together, and then we, you know, we worked quite hard through the winter just getting on all those skis physically. Right. Um, so it's not like we're standing up here kind of fudging it and making it up. Bob and I have legitimately skied everything that we're talking about, right? Which I just, I always think it's rewarding when we're when we get to this process, and it's just it's just fun, kind of like reminiscing about right certain days on on those skis, and then going through the footage and. Anyways, hopefully it's as <laughs> enjoyable for you as it is for, for Bob and I. Um, anything else you want to share before we just jump right into the news? Zero. Perfect. Here we go. Um, first topic of the week, if you are a avid New England skier, especially an avid Vermont skier, chances are you've been kind of keeping an eye on this, but Jay Peak has officially sold. I don't know if that's the right way to describe that. It, it's being sold. Right. Somebody still has to like sign off on a bunch of paperwork. Like the judge. Yes, the has judge to has to off. sign off on it. But anyways, we have a buyer for J Peak officially after at how long has this been going on? Five like years? Thirty five years. Okay. <laughs> it seems like a long time. This let's whole, go with three to five. The whole E B five thing has just seemed like it's been it, it's, it, half yeah. of my lifetime. Totally. Yeah, if you're here, if you're like live in northern Vermont, you're probably kind of sick of hearing about it by now. Yeah. Um, but J Peak officially has a buyer, Pacific Group Resorts. Uh, they auctioned it this week. I believe it was on Wednesday. Um, kind of took a little while to hear, <clears throat> to get the word of the official buyer. Um, and they were the group that made that $58 million offer uh, a little over a month ago. So yeah. we still don't know who the other bidders were, but they certainly weren't bidding against themselves because that's $18 million more than they wanted to spend. I would have been pretty upset if, <laughs> you know, you're shelling out an extra $20 million. Just that's how it goes. <laughs> like $58 million seemed like a good deal to me. And even 76 I think it, it was. Yeah, I like, think 76 is still under what the, right. uh, what the assessed value is. Yeah. But... Yeah, somebody else must have been bidding against them. Right. And I'm curious who that was. Um, the other news that we've had is the resort will operate this season kind of as is, mm -hmm. as it has been operating. And any future changes or upgrades or anything like that will be announced in the spring, which isn't terribly surprising. Yeah. And hopefully this is just like the end in a, in a, good, in a good way for this whole thing to kind of move past the, the the northern vermont yeah. people and region maybe they'll build another water park i don't know the first one's pretty sweet maybe they'll build an outdoor water park now yeah they More, lot, i mean there's lots of stuff up there it's pretty cool you could have a second golf course yep let's yeah. get like a championship style golf course at jp can start hosting corn ferry events i mean they got like an ice rink they have like a turf like a soccer multi-use like turf field yeah like the water park the golf course like the hotel stuff and i assume all of that is included in this sale that's what i understood as well you know kind of unlike we'll use stowe as an example where like vale resorts doesn't own very right. much up there outside of the lifts and the like infrastructure right they don't even own the mountain nor the nor the hotel like spruce exactly. peak development is totally different right so but this i believe they're buying yeah everything 
Yeah, Jay Peak's cool. Yeah. Cool destination. Cool spot for sure. Um, maybe, you know, if you haven't been in a while, maybe wait a year and then like go next <laughs> go next year when they've when they've made some changes. But it'll be definitely worth making yeah. a trip up there. Um, and then second topic of the week, this is kind of a silly one. Uh, we've talked about this once or twice before. Um, vale Resorts has filed a complaint in district court against the town of Vale over the town's blocking of the proposed employee housing development. If you remember, this is all about bighorn sheep. I didn't remember, but when I read the article, it became clear once again. Yeah, so about yeah, a month ago maybe, I believe this, this happened about a month ago, um, early August, I think, is when the hearing was. But the Town of Vale invoked Emergency Ordinance 16 to block a proposed housing project, which would um, basically provide housing for around 165 employees. Um, vale Resorts is claiming misuse of the emergency ordinance, and we also learned that only one bighorn bighorn sheep expert <laughs> testified um, and they did testify that the development would have no impact on the local bighorn sheep population and the town just seemingly kind of ignored that and went ahead with it anyways right so Vail Resorts is basically citing like negligence or I don't really know what the legal term would be but I, I, yeah I don't know in like in all due respect to the sheep like both Vale Town and Vale Resorts should probably want the same thing in more employee housing and affordable housing. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. I'm surprised. I don't know. I, again, respect to the sheep. They're also but, like both at fault. If you want to like specifically talk about the sheep. Yeah, totally. Like the town wasn't there. The right. sheep were there before the town. Like where do you draw the line? Like maybe we should tear the whole town down so that the sheep can have their land back. I want to talk to these bighorn sheep experts these legal these legal minds that defend the sheep yeah and i like when you brought up the question of like how many experts are there like sure they only brought in one like right. what do they do next like my you know my legal knowledge is movie based so like they're going to have to come up with another expert to debunk the first the first expert. expert's testimony right and like where do you like how do you prove in court that you are more of a bighorn sheep expert than someone else I think you cite all of your uh, bighorn sheep research. Either That's either my... way, <laughs> yeah. your published articles on sheep migration. Right, like, exactly. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I feel like they need more employee housing. Again, respect to the sheep. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, there's got to be a, a common ground that the employees and the sheep can strike. It just feels like one of those situations where there should be a solution here that doesn't involve a lawsuit. Well, yeah, and you had a pretty good point, too, of the case title being Vale versus Vale. Yeah. Which is silly. Just such an example of our country. Yeah. That there's a lawsuit where it's Vale versus Vale. Right. And, and, they, and they both want the same thing. Right. Which is very right. strange. One couldn't exist without the other. Right. Like, some mountains could, but Vale... There's nothing there. Right. If they hadn't developed a town, like, uh, anyways, I hope they come up, <laughs> find a solution. But it just, it just, I can't, it feels silly to me. And if you live there, let us know. If you've got a strong opinion about the bighorn sheep and whether this is going to impact their population, I would be fascinated to learn your opinion. Yeah. I'm all for the knowledge. Yeah. Um, third topic of the week. This one's much less controversial. Uh, not that it's controversial, <laughs> I don't know. Um, Faction Skis has announced that they uh, officially received B Corp certification. So that's really cool. Yep. Um, congratulations to Faction Skis. Uh, B Corp certification goes to businesses that strive to practice conscious social and environmental practices. They must pass the 400 question B Corp assessment. Uh, you need to score at least an 80. Faction scored 93.5. Overachievers. Great job. Yep. So congratulations to Faction Skis. And if you didn't already know, which I hope you already knew, we are officially a faction dealer this season. Yep. There's some right out there. Yeah. 
I touched them earlier. I just I was just touching it. Yeah. Right before we came in here. A mana too. Yep. Still don't know what's happening with old Candide. I don't know why I call him old Candide. He's like really not that old. But No, but he's been curious. around he's been around long enough to yeah, be old that's true. Candide. But we're st we're still, you know, waiting with bated breath over yeah. what Candide's gonna ski on this season. I think we're just going to get Candide skis. But I think we'll we see. both agree that that's just the, the way it should go. Yeah, we'll see. And then fourth topic of the week uh, raises the question once again, what will winter bring? We talked about this with the triple threat La Nina season. I think you were gone for that top five Fridays. I don't remember talking to you about that. Um, but we have forecasts from both Farmer's Almanacs, which I admitted thought was a typo when I first read it because I didn't realize that there were two the old and the new and the not old the old and new yeah yeah I didn't know that me neither you learn something new every day um, the old farmers almanac is calling it the tale of two winters with cold and snowy forecasts for half the country and mild and rainy forecasts for the other half we got like some maps that help visualize this more than I can describe it. Uh, fortunately, what they're calling the snowy half applies to most skiing regions. So yay? I guess. Yay. You know, like that seems like a very water is wet type of uh, forecast. It's going to snow in the it, mountains. It's going to be cold and snowy for the northern part of the country Yeah. this winter. Yep. It's typically what happens. <laughs> um, and then the new Farmer's Almanac uh, they have this split kind of into three, three forecasts, New England, Mid-Atlantic, and Midwest all get cold and snowy winters. Ooh. Yay. Um, Pacific Northwest, a normal winter. Okay. Fine. And then they're calling Rocky Mountains through coastal, coastal California, basically. So I'm, I'm assuming they mean like Tahoe to Mammoth swath. Mm-hmm. Because how far do you have to go before you consider a Pacific Northwest? I don't actually know the answer to that question. Above California? That would be my guess. But anyways, they're calling that uh, to be potentially mild and dry, which wouldn't be great. No, like those places need water. They need water, yeah. yeah. Like just beyond the skiing yeah. perspective, they, right. need, they need water. Um, but like I said with the La Nina season, I, I don't... It's not that I don't like appreciate their their expertise here, but I don't really like. I don't know. Well, do you buy into like Mikey downstairs and customer service his woolly bear and valley fog theories? No. He's got his like own farmer's almanac, Mikey's almanac, where how much how the much stripe is on the woolly bear? Yeah, the wider the brown on the woolly bear caterpillar, the snowier it's going to be. Yep. And then the denser the valley fog on like these mornings. Like it was pretty thick this morning. It has been for three days now. Yeah, so the more of those you get, the more snow you're gonna get. What's the correlation? It's moisture? It, yeah, I don't I guess so. Or just a feeling. like the farmer's almanac, like just data compiled over years. Interesting. Well, next time we're uh, we're talking about this topic, we'll have to bring Mike in. Yeah, and his woolly bears, because yeah. he likes to keep them and take pictures of them. We can probably find a bunch. Yeah. Isn't it that time of year? They're starting to come out, yeah. All right, so I can't promise that we'll find a bunch <laughs> of woolly bears and film them, but maybe we will. Um, and that's it for news topics. Then we have our edits of the week. Uh, first up is Line Traveling Circus, Season 15, Episode 1. Probably one of my favorite. <laughs> one of my it's favorites. A good, it's a good one, for sure. <laughs> Um, and congratulations for 15 seasons. It's crazy. Yep. It makes me feel old because I remember when they started. Right. I was in college with a few of those guys. And yeah, it's just it's amazing to think back to the first seasons and, and how far they've come. So check that out. I would say it's highly entertaining, even if you're not a park skier or anything like that. I agree. Um, and then second edit of the week is Juna Kangas and Sentiment. Um, just classic park skiing edit. I, the, the only thing I have to say about this is the four by three aspect ratio is coming back. So does that mean we all have to get new TVs in like five years? I don't know. Like, do you like it? Like, I'm not. A, I like, don't. I don't no. love it. 
No, I, I like. I understand that people like it from a stylistic, like artistic yep. perspective, but no, I prefer yeah. wider screen. Yeah. Right? No, I think you lose. I think you lose scope. Like it's just more accurate. Yeah. The wider it is. Yeah. 1920 by 1080, please. <laughs> um, and then finally, we have a trailer for In Your Dreams from Level One Productions. Uh, looks like a fun movie and very female centric. Mm -hmm. So really cool to see more and more like women specific ski movies over the past few years. Um, and this one, you know, I think we're going to get the level one style and flair, which I always enjoy. Yep. So keep an eye out for those. And yeah, that's it for Top 5 Fridays this week. Hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Temps are dropping. We're going to be skiing before we know it. Yep. You don't Pretty have a watch. Soon. No, I don't. It's September 9th. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Now keep an eye out for more comparison videos. We'll have another one next week. We're hopefully dropping our snowboard test next week, too. Um, first year we've had a snowboard test. That was a learning experience for both Bob and I because we're not snowboarders. But we had the help of some fantastic snowboarders. Yep. So. We sure tried our hardest and learned a lot. Yep. There's a lot of different shapes of snowboard. That's what I learned. Yeah. And very minuscule differences in them as well in terms of construction. And they seemingly all do everything. According to the catalog, every <laughs> snowboard does everything. <laughs> uh, so yeah, keep an eye out for that. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you next week. Bye.